Hey guys, it's Jason here and we're talking about metal roofs today. We're going to walk through a few steps to help educate you on what you want to do when you put a metal roof on your house. When it comes to metal roofing, you want it to really be a custom roof. You want it custom made and so we're going to walk you through a couple details to, to show you how to find a contractor that does that and to show you what to expect and what to look for when, it talk, when you talk about metal. Uh, metal is usually more money, but it's supposed to be a lifetime roof and we're gonna show you how to get that lifetime roof from any contractor, whether it be us or anybody else, uh, what it takes to put a metal roof on. So here are a few steps we're gonna walk you through. On this particular metal roof, it ties into what we call a low slope roof. So there's not a lot of slope to it and particularly in something like that, you don't wanna put metal on it but then we have a steep roof over here that you can put metal on and we're gonna tie the two together in a pretty cool way. This, is, this piece right here is actually this piece of metal and it's what's underneath and we'll walk you through and show you. This is the clip that we built that the panel hooks into. What's cool about this, it's, it's all built in, it's one piece. If you look, the metal folds over itself so that when you put your nails or your screws in here, they're never gonna be exposed. So if water gets under here, it can never touch them because there's a lip back here. As the water runs down, it hits the lip and then it runs its way out. Now, if we get one of those hurricane storms again and the water jumps this lip and comes across, guess what? Can't go anywhere. This folds on top of itself. This is all one piece that folds, smashes, and keeps the water out. And it's, what it also does is it creates a raised lip right here. So as the water comes down the roof, it wants to get away from here. This is a weak point of the roof and we've made it the strongest point of the roof now. At Eustace Roofing, we're unique. We're a company that's advanced in our field. We do roofing like nobody else. We have the equipment to do the job. We have an electronic folding machine here. We have a shear that's electronic here. So everything is precise, the measurements are precise. And we're making some metal specifically for a building that we are working on. All the angles and everything meet that building. Okay guys, we were able to make a piece of metal for a building that needed it specifically designed different than something you can buy at the store. And so we've done that today. We made a couple pieces uh, practice pieces until we got it perfect. Now we can start making the rest of the roof and we can install it and that particular homeowner will have a roof unlike anyone else. We're on a metal roof today that a building owner spent a fortune on and they're having a lot of problems. So we're going to show you the difference between a custom roof and a roof that's going to give you problems. Alright guys, this is something where uh, a roofer has just made it work but the owner has spent thousands of dollars and they're looking for something that's lifetime. This is not lifetime, guys. This is a lifetime of problems, you know, not security. If you can see, there's a lot of gaps where my hand can go under, where wind can blow water under, because it's not customized. It's not built just for this building. It's built for a variety of buildings. And that's the difference between custom metal work and making something fit that's not designed for that. You can see this panel should actually overlap this and it doesn't. So this is open to the environment, the wind, the water, and what they did is to combat that is they just put a sealant on it. And guys, sealants aren't lifetime. The metal may be, but not sealants. Also, if you look, this piece of metal here is so close to this rib that it's gonna hold water in here and the water's gonna get back and get into the nails or the screws and, and penetrate the building and get inside. So what we like to do, either make this metal sit on top of this rib so the water hits and runs down here and never, never gets close to your fasteners. Also put fasteners in here that you can pull right out with your hand. These fasteners are doing no good. What's really important on a, on a ridge cap like this, if you're gonna use fasteners, you need to use a stitch screw fastener. And what that is, is as the screw goes in, it gets bigger and expands so it holds it better. And in this case, they use the same screw for every aspect of the roof and that, folks, is not the right way to do it. We got a major roof problem here. Um, this is something that you don't want to see when you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a metal roof. This is a big transition. You got a valley, you got a cap, and you got your panels here. 
And if you've seen earlier on our roof, this was pretty smooth. This was all covered up right here. The cap actually came through here and underneath the panel, which protects you from these seams that you're going to have when the valleys come together. What's interesting here is we're back to the customization stuff again. This piece is built for the rake of the building. It's not built to be a piece of cap. And this is what you get when you don't customize a metal roof. All this water's going into this area. And again, thank God for sealants because the building would have major, major issues. And it already does, but it's taken more time because the sealants have blocked some of that. But again, sealants are not what you want protecting your, your building, your investment. And, and that's what we have here because it's not custom built. This valley isn't custom made for this job. It's a standard piece of valley that you can put on 20 different types of roofs and they're making it work on this building, except it's really not working because it's leaking. This is a chimney. This is a bad area on a roof. This is an area where a lot of people have a lot of problems. Um, when we built this metal roof, we're in the process of, of it right now, but we're gonna show you some little details that make a difference in the long run. Today, what we did is we rolled our panel up against the wall. That just helps. It's just another step before the flashing even goes on to protect your home. We rolled our peeling stick, our high temp peeling stick up against the wall. So every chance we get, we're putting a layer of protection between your chimney and your roof and the, the rain that could possibly get in. So we're taking those steps to prevent any moisture water getting in your home. Water runs downhill. What do we have here? We have an open piece of flashing here that sealant is protecting. Guys, everybody knows water runs downhill. So whatever you have needs to overlap in this direction. And here we have the opposite. So. These are things that the, the building owner has no idea of and they don't know why it's leaking. But as you can see, we're exposing that now and you can tell why it's leaking. He went with the next best thing other than sealant. He put tape on it, guys. We got tape protecting a $100,000 roof. Guys, this is where you really want somebody who knows what they're doing. This is a disaster. It's already cracking. It's the only thing keeping the water out at this point, and it's really not, it's still leaking, is roofing tar. That's it, guys. Also, again, we got a backwards piece of flashing. It's facing up and, and the water's just running underneath it, pouring in the building. And we can see that someone's tried to repair it. So it went from bad to worse. It went from a bad install, you know, they didn't customize this, to someone trying to fix it. And now they've got a guy that likes to use caulking and tar too. And so not only has he paid for the roof, but he's paid for a pretty obviously disaster of a repair to go with it. And so guys, at this point, this guy, his only option is, is to hire the guy that's gonna do it right at this point. And most of those guys don't wanna to touch this disaster. So start from the beginning with the roofer that has the tools and the equipment to do the job. So you don't end up with stuff like this. This is something where when you say looks can be deceiving, I mean, look at this guys. These screws are doing nothing. They're the wrong fasteners. This is the wrong piece for this rake. It doesn't fit it, it shouldn't be here and it's leaking. And the screws never made contact with the, the plywood that's underneath. Um, these are a metal screw, so you'd really want to hit metal. And they're about an inch too short. So guys, this isn't working. This isn't lifetime, guys. This isn't what you're paying for. This is our rake right here. And if you notice, there's no fasteners. And it's strong, it's sturdy, it can withstand a hurricane. Your fasteners are hidden on the other side of here. This clips on and then it crimps to this piece here and it's a nice clean look with no fasteners. That's the way this panel was meant to be put on. This is a standing seam roof. It's not supposed to have exposed fasteners and we're showing you that today to protect you so you don't have that problem in the future.